Hey, this is Dominic, and this is your home for the cutting edge conversations on optimizing your personal performance, lighting up your sex life, and living a purpose driven life of your own design. These are the topics that Dominic and I have both struggled with in our own lives and still don't always get right. This is Brian. Welcome to the Great Man Podcast. Well, we are officially in the home stretch in the final few days of 2022. And this is the time of year I get really reflective about where I have been this year. And I get really fired up about the promise of a new day that the calendar year, the new year ahead holds. And this is also the time where the men in our community are locking in and committing to their bold move for 2023. And your bold move is a courageous and decisive act in pursuit of the life that you want to live. And by executing on your bold move, it fires up the center of your life, which touches every other area of your life in which you operate. And so this is your invitation to join us on Thursday, December the 8th for the 90 minute masterclass that I'm running on how to pick your bold move for 2023. I'm going to be sharing with you the success stories and the life-changing magic of going big on picking your bold move and actually executing on it with the men in our community. So you'll be hearing their success stories. You're also going to hear about the critical role of accountability and making sure that that bold move happens. And so even if you're listening to this episode after Thursday, December the 8th, don't worry because in the show notes, I'm going to have the registration for the masterclass, but also an opportunity to purchase a replay for the masterclass. And both of those links are at the top of the show notes. So please join us for the Bold Move 2023 masterclass, 90 minutes, Thursday, December the 8th. Replay is available. You do not need to attend live. Everyone's getting a replay. And those links are at the top of the show notes. Hello, brothers. Brian and I are back for episode three of our six-part series of the final episodes on the Great Man Within podcast. And today, we are talking about bold endings, how to know when something's over, ending with integrity, and making space for bold new beginnings. So to reset the context for you, you know, the theme of our six-week journey is about, it's about the journey, not just the destination. And as you know, over the last couple of episodes, I've been sharing with people that we're encouraging the men in our community to make bold moves in our lives, right? A bold move is a courageous and decisive act in pursuit of the life that you want to live. And for some people, a bold move will require a bold ending to something like a relationship that's not serving, employment that maybe your time there is done, a bad habit, an addiction. These endings need to happen to make space for a new beginning. But here's the problem. We almost never end things soon enough. I think many of us are afraid of ending something too soon, but 98% of the time, the problem is we let things languish for too long. We let shit get really bad. Like the unsatisfying relationship that devolves into spite and hatred, the business that's hemorrhaging money, the deteriorating physical health that leads to a heart attack, the anxious workaholism that turns into us insomnia and then maybe a panic attack or the bad habit that turns into a rock bottom addiction. Or even worse, we normalize whatever problem it is that we have, we acclimate to it and then we live with it for an extended period of time or sometimes even a lifetime. This, my friends, is what Brian and I have been preaching for four years is called drift. Right, That unconscious state of existence where we're just meandering through life and usually we need a big wake-up call to snap out of it. And so the consequences of not ending things soon enough is it leads to either a Mack truck moment where we get hit by the 18-wheeler and those are very expensive wake-up calls that some of us don't ever get up from. Another consequence is just discontent right? The chronic sense of underlying dissatisfaction with the relationship you're in, the job that you're in. You try to talk yourself into being grateful for it, or it's not that bad, but the reality is you know you want something different and maybe you're afraid to change. And one of the worst consequences of all is that feeling of hopelessness, 
right? Kind of this unconscious acceptance, a submission to the fact that you believe that this is how it is. And this is just, you know, my life or how it's going to be. So in order for you to make the bold move, a courageous and decisive act in pursuit of the life that you want to live, you have to know three things. Number one, how to know when something is over so you can make that bold ending. Number two, how to end that thing with integrity. And number three, to make space for the exciting, bold, new beginnings. And that's going to be the structure of our episode today. I'm now going to bring back Brian, who both he and I are still not feeling <laughs> any better than we did last week. Actually, uh, Brian, you're feeling worse. So we are continuing to limp through the finish line <laughs> of these six episodes. Welcome, buddy. How are you feeling right now? Quick check in. We are boldly limping through the finish line. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Towards the end. You know, I don't feel great. I have even more of a Chicago accent than I typically have with the, the nasal blockages here. But I, I got this kind of sexy, raspy voice. So I'm going to milk this for, for this episode. Yeah. I know that uh, it's lighting my fire right about now. I'm sure audience, <laughs> some of our audience members are probably enjoying it. So, man, let's talk about this first concept of how to know when something's over, right? Because I just laid out the problem. The problem is that we let things go on for too long. You know, you and I had a, a heart to heart maybe about a month ago where it was just like, hey, man, it's time to bring this podcast to a close. And I think for a lot of people, it's really difficult to know when something is over, and so I, I wanted to start with you and maybe some of the reflections and the iterations that we went through when it came to kind of looking at the podcast and asking ourselves the tough questions and then arriving at the conclusion that, you know, hey, yeah, it, it's time. Yeah. I love that we're doing this in real time. I'm going to skip ahead really quick to step three, which is to make space for bold new beginnings. And when I look at whether it's the ending of this podcast, which we'll talk about here in a second, or previous endings that I've had before, there's always been this thought that I needed to know what's next. Mm -hmm. And I think what I find really powerful about what we're doing here with the podcast is that neither you or I have like the next thing planned, you know, is that we're not making space and ending this podcast because we're so clear on what has to happen next. Right. So there, there is an element of, of faith to this. And that's also how we started, right? We started with not necessarily knowing where it was going to go. But when I think back to, um, of us doing the, the live talks together and then you saying, hey, like people are enjoying this message, let's do it on a more regular basis. I think podcasts would be a good medium. Neither you or I had podcasted before, right? You talked on stages all the time. But that was exciting because there's a whole new medium. It was something to explore and to putting our, our voices out there. I was also running a sexual health business and it made a ton of sense from a business perspective to do a podcast. I found that our number one medium for marketing that business was me going on other podcasts. Hmm. And so I thought, wow, what would it be like to have our own podcast? That's a, that'd right. be amazing. And if you look at our content from the very beginning, from the first year, we talked a lot about sex and, and sexual health and thoughts and beliefs around sex and sexuality. And that was a main topic for ours. We don't hit that topic as often as things have, have evolved. And so for me, it made sense. I also got to hang out with my buddy. And I also got to learn new topics and explore. You know, I also think that when we talked a lot about for you, we talked about sex addiction. I was going through about a year into the podcast, a business breakup, and this podcast was cathartic for me. Yep. It was so helpful to like really think in depth around what that relationship and what that business meant to me. And it felt like every time we had a new topic or every time we brought on a new guest that I would learn something a little bit new about that situation, about myself. And that was exciting. Yep. And so the beginning of this felt fun and energetic. There was clarity on, on why we're going to do it, even if we didn't know exactly where it was going to go. That's how we birthed it. That was the energy with which we birthed this. Yeah. Before you go any further on that, I think what you're hitting on is super important is in order to answer this question around how do we know something is over is to first ask the question, how did it begin? What were the energetic forces that created the birthing of it in the first place? Because as you're talking, it actually has illuminated some new awarenesses for me. 
you know, when we started this as an idea back in 2018, you know, I was the one who came with the idea of the podcast and I, I was like, dude, it'd be so cool to do this with you, like my friend. And I wanted to go deeper with you. I wanted to have more experiences with you because I love you. And at that time, you and I were kind of for the first time in our lives, starting to openly express our inner worlds on bigger stages. Right? Like me talking about sex addiction, you talking about surviving cancer and getting STD diagnoses on the same day, talking about taboo topics that most men aren't allowed, and I put that in air quotes, to talk about. And we found, you know, with the test case of doing that in person with our discerning dick live talks, that there was an appetite for it. And so we had this, you know, the birthing of the podcast was never from a commercial standpoint, right? Like there, there wasn't actually anything about growing an audience to commercialize. It was really kind of about let's reach men and let's also find our own healing and catharsis about talking about things that otherwise for our whole lives, we've been told to stuff down. And it's hard to believe, Bri, but the podcast was the public platform back in 2019 where I came out publicly about my sex addiction. Like like this podcast was the place where we did that where you guided me through a two episode you know deep dive which is still one of the favorite experiences I've had on the show because you did such a masterful job of guiding me through this chronological experience of my journey of the making of a sex addict and then you know like fast forwarding to today this podcast provided that. So in the early stages of that honeymoon energy, right? Like the beginning phases, it was really birthed in speaking up, finding the power, our voices, reaching other men around these taboo topics. And it was never really around something commercial. Right. It was, it was the creation, the act of creating together that, that we were really after. And, you know, things have evolved a lot, Dominic, for you and, and building out masterminds for me and in, in switching businesses and also in relationship, I was single and in the topics that we were, we, were, we brought up, I could talk about anything because they were my stories. And as I found relationship and became committed to that relationship, I had to think about somebody else and what they might think about me now sharing our stories. And so the podcast started as a platform where, wow, we can like just share and talk about these taboo topics, but it became an area that I had to be consciously aware of boundaries and we could still do it and we could still bring a lot of value, but it wasn't the free for all that I could just show up and, and, <laughs> and uh, say whatever I wanted and understandably. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a tabloid of Brian's life anymore. Like the tell all tales had to, to kind of be buttoned up a little bit. That's right. That's right. And that became a, a source of friction and, and it made it just a little bit harder, right? just a little bit sure. harder. I started to find a less alignment between some of those taboo topics and what I was trying to do from a business standpoint. And I think even more important than that, Dom, through the catharsis of this podcast, whether it was you and sex addiction or me and STDs and the business I was running, those topics became less taboo and it had less power and less energy and therefore became less interesting to me. Yes. I'm not sitting here and saying that we have become fully enlightened and that's why the podcast is ending. <laughs> that there's nothing else <laughs> to work through. <laughs> We've learned Cut it on. all. <laughs> not what I'm saying. But at least for those topics, I can have those conversations now. They don't interest me nearly as much. I've had a few people ask me, like, why don't you go back into the sexual health realm? And I'm like, because I don't want to. You know, I went through testicular cancer and I found this like really interesting thing as a single guy about how my identity was really wrapped around my sexuality and my gender and have worked through a lot of that in the subsequent four years. So now I don't know what's next and that's okay. But some of these topics that we're talking about, or we used to talk about more often, they're just not quite as interesting to me anymore. Which is a sign of growth. And I think that's hard for us to, to understand sometimes is the energy and the electricity that we experience about something like we did in our early stages, you know, me coming out about sex addiction, you talking about these topics that were taboo. And then they just kind of lost their shine because what made them interesting was like, we weren't allowed to express it, but once we became more fully self-expressed, then it's like, okay, well, I've been there. I've done that. And Oftentimes in our lives, when we experience that downshift in energy, we feel like we're losing something 
where there's a failure. And in actuality, what it is, is it's a, it's a graduation, right? Like we've graduated into something else. And so recognizing, okay, like, and that doesn't necessarily signal that the thing is over, right? Like that doesn't necessarily mean the podcast is over. Like maybe there's a new journey, you know, a sub journey to go on. And, you know, in 2020, when the pandemic hit, the journey that I got excited and lit up to go on was the world is in a place of complete uncertainty and chaos. Everyone is ground to a halt. No one knows what the hell is going on. And I remember doing like daily podcasts for like, I don't know, 50, 60 days, like every day showing up right at the beginning of the pandemic to provide a sense of safety and security. And that's where many of our listeners and many of our mastermind members came from because that was a big period of time of awakening for lots of people who hadn't really stepped towards the realm of inner work, but now had no excuses not to get in. And we had a little more time to to listen during <laughs> during the early pandemic days. I was with Becca's parents and Becca on Long Beach Island. That's where we were quarantining for a while. And I'd tune into our podcast and you'd be doing a, a solo episode and you'd have that that deep. It was like it, you, you were like your voice was slower during that time. It's like yeah. your intro would be like, hello, brothers. <laughs> Today in my journal. I'm like, this is good. I like this. <laughs> Keep it going, Dom. <laughs> so, yeah, man. We had. I think it's. I think it's. It's good to know that we had that energy wasn't the same energy with which we started, but it was a different energy and an exciting energy nonetheless. Yeah, and again, to answer this question, like, how do you know when something's over? One of the main questions that I like to ask is, when energy is shifting, is this a plateau, or is this truly complete? Like, have we hit a plateau? Is there a new thread to explore? And because this podcast has been you know, running for four years now, right? Launched in January of 2019, 2019, 2020 were two really big years. And we had a lot of growth on the show, a lot of new listeners. And in 2020 is when we launched the Great Man Mastermind, you know, 20 guys who came together. And then in 2021, launched two more masterminds. And this podcast was pivotal, crucial, you know, in bringing men to those masterminds. And so this podcast served the purpose of filling those groups and, you know, kind of being a lighthouse for men whose ships were at sea looking for a community. But, you know, when those doors started to close, like the masterminds are, have been primarily closed groups. And then it was kind of like, all right, what is the role that the podcast now serves? You know, like interviewing guests wasn't lighting me up the same way, you know, talking about those taboo topics, like you said, wasn't lighting me up the same way. I felt like I kind of talked about all the things that I wanted to talk about 300 episodes. Like that's a lot of content. And then this year hit, you know, with Lyme disease and I've told everybody, you know, get a chronic illness. It will very quickly bring into focus anything that's energy plus and energy minus. And when you go from being a millionaire in terms of energy to going to having 20 bucks a day to spend, and that's for everything, it very, very quickly illuminates like what's giving you energy and what's not. And I could feel that the podcast was like, this is something that I'm just keeping alive rather than like the spark, the engine, the drive and desire to show up every day and, and be at my best. Well, and I think you and I had a discussion, maybe this was a year ago, but it, it was, you know, when we started this podcast, this was, this was your thing. You were putting the topics together. I could show up as color commentary and I loved doing that. But my commitment to this was to show up once a week for about two hours, right? That was my, yeah. my all in really, right? You were the one going through intros and working with the technician to make sure that the podcast sounded good and pulling on guests and you had Callie right in support of you doing some of that work and about a year ago I think you had a shift in the support that you wanted yep. right related to this podcast and you're looking for me to step into more of a let's call it a co-founder or like type of like take on some more leadership and responsibility and at that time it didn't make sense for me to do that I, I love the two hours that I could commit to every week but I didn't have enough time in the day to commit more than that. And I think what we both realize is that to keep this channel, this medium open and keep it at a high quality that it has been, it's going to take more. It's going to take more money. It's going to take more time. And 
right? Then, then Lyme disease. So, and what's important about the story you just told about, you know, kind of my energy and desire shifting to have like a co pilot who is kind of going 50 50 on this. And that's not what I wanted at the very beginning, right? At the very beginning, like I was very, I was clear, like I wanted this to kind of be my vision and this idea. And hey, Bri, you want to run, ride shotgun on this? And you were totally down with that. So that worked. When that shift happened, where I was like, okay, I want more of a, like a 50 50, it was to answer the question of, did we hit a plateau and we just need to break through that and make some changes? Or like, is this complete? And so bringing it to you was to answer that question. And when you kind of came back and said, no, this is, you know, my all in is the two hours I can give you every, every week that we record. So that was one arena that allowed me to know, okay, maybe it's not just a plateau. And when I started thinking more deeply about, hey, I'm going to be winding the masterminds down by the end of this year. You know, the podcast is not going to now support the growth of the masterminds. That's now out of resonance. Is there anything else that's here that's like truly like I feel a spark and engine of desire around it? And when the answers kept coming back, like, no, 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 it was a very clear, definitive, all right, this has been a hell of a ride and it's time to say it's ready for a close. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the question of, of reflection, like I do I look back at this time and man, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the listeners that came and, and provided us questions and support. I mean, some of those emails that you got done that you'd share with me, like that would light up my whole week. Yeah. People coming to their own epiphanies and realizations and charting their own course and their own path for what makes sense in their life. I love that, man. I loved some of the guests that we brought on and you know, the, the topics that we talked about on this podcast survived way beyond the podcast. I'd go to dinner parties and talk to my parents about some of the things that we learned. And sometimes that really upset them. <laughs> Other times yeah. they found it more oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it, it made me a more interested and more interesting person going deeper on these topics. And that's something that I'm going to miss. And so when we talk about we're bringing this to a close, I can certainly reflect and find gratitude. And I know that it's the right call. And I also feel sad that this is ending. Sure. And I think with the work that we've done, like knowing that that sadness is there, it doesn't mean it should keep going. But I'm sad because something that I, I loved is coming to an end. And that's okay because we can, we can make this a bold ending to create space for what's next. I think that's one of the crucial factors in, in being able to, to end things with boldly is understanding there's going to be emotion around it. And like you said, the sadness is not a reason to keep it going. It's not about that. It's that every ending comes with some form of loss or, you know, or emotion or sadness. And yeah, there are things we're going to be losing here, not the least of which is our regular touch points of getting on the horn every week and, and doing this like that. That's something else that I'm in the process of grieving. But I said this a couple episodes ago, you know, when it comes to just maintaining the status quo because we're afraid of feeling these things or confronting the hard conversations, maintaining the status quo over a long period of time is like a low-grade poison to the life that you want to live. It just kind of eats away and chips away. And one of the things I wrote about in my first book, Design Your Future, is there's kind of this equation of the pain of change equation, you know, kind of like when the pain of change or the perceived pain of change is greater than the perceived pain of same, right? Then we stay in the sea of sameness. We just kind of continue on. And it's only when the pain of same is greater than the perceived pain of change, do we actually like make the move. And I think the thing we were talking about before we started recording is the hard thing about the perceived pain of change is change typically asks you to make a really big upfront lump payment that hurts, right? Like, hey, I need $100,000 of emotional or whatever financial, like to make this change. Whereas the pain of same, it's like, hey, it's going to cost you 25 grand. We're going to charge you that every month for the next into perpetuity. And, and you're like, ah, I can kind of, so you live with that. But it's not a good deal in the long term. Not a good deal. And the, uh, the other piece of this is not only is there an investment up front to make the change, but you don't know what the outcome is going to be. 
And so it's like the old sailing, it's like the devil that you know, right? Like, well, if I pay that little amount, even though this isn't exactly aligned, at least I know what I'm getting. Right. Whereas if I make this big investment and I make a big change and I don't know what the outcome is going to look like. And I mean, I think the easiest example to give is, is like a romantic relationship. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to break up. I have to get back on the apps. I have to go on first dates again. And like maybe sounds exciting to begin with. And then it gets to be some sort of drag, right? And you don't know if somebody else is out there that you're going to connect with. And that can be really scary. And so that that pain of staying the same starts to feel a little more attractive. And which one of us hasn't been in a singular relationship for too long a period of time? I know I've, I've wasted plenty of months, <laughs> multiple times, in the wrong romantic relationship. Sure. I mean, it's, yeah, the current conditions are not ideal. It's unfulfilling. But if I change them, I could die. <laughs> you know, it's like, like it could get yeah. really bad. And that's why it's so hard for us to make those changes because, like you said, the fear of the unknown. And I'm just thinking about so many of the guys in the mastermind who, you know, before they came into the mastermind, had been dreaming about making bold moves in their lives. You know, I'm thinking about one guy in particular who I'm going to feature on the Bold Move Masterclass. His name is John. For five years, He'd been talking about like wanting to leave his job. He was discontent. He was unfulfilled, but it was safe and secure and he was making money. He's got a family he was responsible for. But finally, you know, in the support of another group of men, he decided, you know what? I'm actually going to do this thing. I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to, and I'll, I'll share the rest of the story at the masterclass. But like his dream was to build an Airbnb and to rent it out. And so at the end of last year, he made the bold move to leave his job and to build the Airbnb, which has exploded in popularity this past year. And he shared it with us. And there's countless stories of guys like that. And when we dig in and say, what took you so long? You know, like now that you're living the life you live, like what took you so long? And they're like, well, fuck, first of all, I wish I would have made this choice sooner now knowing, and it, it's not been easy, but what took him so long is- you know, like the fear of the unknown and the rationalization of, well, I should be grateful for what I have. It's not that bad. And, but that is, like I said, that status quo preservation is like a low grade poison to the life you want to live. I think that's why it's so important that we talk on this show and work in the mastermind on emotional fluency. And it's so important to have that compass so that we can really know, we can ask those questions, we can be curious. Is this a plateau or is this complete? We can ask that curiosity and then we can feel it. Like, am I not moving forward because I'm afraid? Am I not moving forward because of the unknown? Am I here because I, I believe that I have responsibilities? And I think oftentimes the thinking stops there. Well, I've got kids, I've got this, I've got that, I can't possibly... And I've had some of my most productive and energetic conversations with business partners, with romantic partners, when I bring these questions up and we start to see what new possibilities are out there. Not that we have to come to any sort of conclusion on those, but just understanding is this a plateau or is this complete is a really great place to be curious. It sure is, man. And when you bring up emotional fluency, that's the ability for you to feel a feeling which for many guys is revolutionary because we, you know, shove down our emotions to be able to name that feeling, like to know what it is that we're feeling, to be present with the feeling in a non-reactive way, right? To be able to like experience anger without punching a hole in the wall. And then the expression, right? To be able to express and articulate like what it is that you're feeling. And I would say the fifth step is probably to be with someone else's emotions, right? To be able to hold space for someone else's emotions. And when we develop this level of fluency, being able to feel what we feel and to name it and to be present with it in a non-reactive way, there's a deep intelligence, right? It's like you now have this inner navigation system. And I'll share two quick stories of like when necessary endings revealed themselves to me from the form of like an emotional impulse. 10 years ago when I was in a romantic relationship, the one that you know I entered Sex Addicts Anonymous to repair, there was this like this absolute moment of clarity. I was in Aspen, Colorado in a gondola coming down from a hike at a particular point where like I was reflecting on our relationship, not knowing if we were going to have a future together. And there was this immediate sense of, 
I could see my entire next 20 years play out with her in it. And my whole body contracted. Everything in my body contracted. My whole future shrunk. My whole body shrunk. And in that moment, I didn't know it because I didn't trust myself, my, my emotions as well as I do now. But in that moment, it was the beginning of the end. Like I knew that we didn't have what it took together. And it took me another month to really like trust that feeling. And, you know, we ended up breaking up a month later. The second quick story on that is I left a 15 year corporate career. How did I know when to do that? The two feelings. The first one was for all of my business career, I always knew the job I wanted next. I started off as a sales desk person. I knew I wanted the sales job. When I got the sales job, I knew I wanted the sales management job. I was in the sales management job and I looked up at the jobs above me. I looked up at the organization above me and I'm like, nothing here appeals to me. I want nobody's job. I thought about inventing my own job. None of that seemed interesting to me. And I was like, that's a first. And a few months later during a meditation, I had this vision of being an entrepreneur, leaving the corporate world behind, being scared as shit, but having the freedom to create. And that lit my body up like a Christmas tree. And that was when in that moment that I knew definitively I'm done here. It still took me like I, I needed two years to actually leave, but I made that decision in that moment. That was February of 2014. I said, I'm leaving in February, 2016. And those were when I knew it was over. So very different feelings, one of which was contraction and you could feel yeah. that in your body. Right, that gave you the indicator for wait a second, I think this is done. And then the other one, completely the opposite, you know, expansion and energy and like almost more of a, a reaching towards that versus a, a closing down of something else. I also think it's important, Dom, that, you know, it took you two years to put the plan in place and to leave with integrity. And so I think that's something that, that's really important to talk about is that you and I, yes, we had a singular conversation that it's time to bring the podcast to a close. But there were a series of emotions that I know I felt throughout the last, let's say, year or so. I'm sure you felt something similar. There was a series of conversations that teetered on the, is this a plateau or is this complete, right? Should our roles change? Do we need a different strategy? Like who are the types of people that are going to do the activities that we need to bring on the right guests to have a great podcast, Right. And so sometimes the, we, don't, we don't have to react just because we feel a contraction or an expansion right away. It's just an indicator for a direction that we may want to continue to look at. 100%. And I think that's a good pivot point for us to talk about, well, okay, when you know it's time for something to end, how to end with integrity. And, you know, I had a teaching from John Wineland, who's, you know, been on the podcast before and a, you know, a coach that is in the men's work space and romantic space. One of the things that I learned from him was, how you finish things says a lot about you, right? And I took that to heart. How you finish things, how you end things says a lot about you. And I would say, you know, in many areas of my life, in my early years, I would just let things kind of like dissolve or fall apart or I'd avoid, you know, until things got bad or, you know, especially in relationship, you know, just kind of let it fade, you know, back away, that kind of thing. That said a lot about me and my inability to be a man. And right to own and to make the tough decisions and to see with clarity. So these days, it's really about like, how do I end something with the same love and grace or you know, not the same, but like with the love and grace that's commensurate with the journey that we've been on, right? So this podcast, it's not lost on me that many people's lives have changed listening to the show. We know it because you guys have reached out to us. Some of you have been listening to every episode of the 320 plus episodes. That's a commitment. You know, you've been here for four years and maybe we're your favorite show or one of the shows in your rotation, or maybe we've come in and out of your rotation. Like to recognize that we're not just talking to ourselves here. There are real life human beings, you know, who have come to depend on the show or come to value. So how do we bring something like this to an integrous end? You know, there, there is a big part of me, Bri, that's exhausted and I'm in a depressed state. We talked about this before the show where like, I just don't have good feelings right now. I'm in a state where 
you could give me the greatest piece of news. And like right now, it just doesn't register. Like my, my, the neurochemistry isn't cooperating in that way. So the easy thing would be to just do one episode piece. We're done. Like abrupt ending. It would be, that would be the easy thing for my nervous system. But to honor the show and the journey that we've been on together, it was like, now we need one last ride. And I got to be honest, man, it has not been easy, you know, showing up for these episodes. Like we're both sick. Last week, you know, when we were supposed to record, you had the tragic news of your buddy passing away. So you had to go leave, you know, and fly to the other side of the country and mourn that while I had to quickly scramble and pick up the pieces to do an episode, you know, like it's been hard. And at the same point in time, there's no other way that I would want this to go down, right? To honor you as my co-host, to honor me as the one who came up with this idea and wanting, you know, and loving the show and to honor our our listeners who've been on this journey with us. You know, we say often the antidote to drift is intentionality. And something I learned when my buddy died, I was in LA last week. When I got to LA, there were several people I saw like on the Hermosa Beach Pier, for example, that were wearing similar clothes to what he would have worn. And in my mind, I was like, wait, is that, is that Dave? No. And then of course it would sink in that no, my, my buddy had, had passed away. And it wasn't until we got to the service the next day where we saw his pictures and we saw all the people together gathered and people started telling stories that it started to sink in from my head, you know, down into my, into my heart and to really be able to say goodbye to him in a really important way. And so this leaving with intentionality or, or ending boldly, I think a ceremony is a really great way to do that. Now on a podcast, we can't hold hands like we did on the beach in, in LA but what we can do is we can set aside six really special episodes, show up for those, and do what we've always done on this podcast, which is bring exactly what's happening in our lives to this stage. And I'm so happy that we're doing that. It feels like an end. It feels like it's moving from my, my head to my heart. And it's also something that I can be proud of. So when I think about my next bold new beginning, I can think about and feel that I was in integrity with how I ended the last thing. And I, th I believe that that puts me in a better state of creation when I know that this thing is definitively done as opposed to doing what we often do, which is just kind of, you know, is it done? I'm not sure. Let me just walk away from it. Let's just end the podcast. And, you know, people will know that it's done. This feels clear and decisive and ceremonial. Ah, uh, well, I, I think that was really beautifully said, man. And you know what you you stirred up in me as you were talking is the way that we're able to go about this, like the ceremonial ending, also helps us to reflect and unpack the many benefits and the lessons learned. Right, just even in the pre, yes, uh, the pre, the pre conversation that we had before this episode, we started. Oh, oh my gosh, this is what we learned, and as we're talking right now, it's like, man, this is who I was back four years ago. I've forgotten about that. I forgot that I came out on this podcast about my sex addiction publicly, like. As we go through this ceremonial completion, it's almost like taking all the money out of the bank that like has accumulated over the course of that period of time and looking at how rich we actually are versus, you know, we often just kind of like drop the one thing and move on to the next thing without even reflecting on that. And one other analogy that's popping to mind, Bri, that, that uh, you kind of stirred up as well for many people going through a traditional school system, say going to high school and then off to college, there's something definitive, very definitive. Like when high school's over, the kids that you grew up with, the, you know, the, the same people from your hometown, if you grew up in that hometown, like that's done. And now you're moving maybe to a different state. You're going to a completely different school with different responsibilities, with different students. And it's like a ceremonial time with graduations. You know, graduation is like a, an exclamation point on this is done and there's sadness. Like that period of time is never going to be the same again. It gives way to a new beginning where it's it's not unclear at all. You're not like, am I still in high school or am I in college now? Like it's, it's, it's very clear, like day one of college, I'm in a new place. I'm starting something that comes with its own anxieties and fears, but there's an energy to it. And that's what we're talking about here is like when one thing blurs into the next and we never really finish something, we never really start something new, 
there's a lack of energy and that's the low grade poison of status quo that I'm talking about. And these bold endings do require courageous and decisive acts in pursuit of the life you want to live, but it brings a new energy. It brings a new energy to what's next. It also brings more intelligence to what's next. Because when we got to sit here and reflect on everything that we've done, I can promise you that there are lessons that we wouldn't have cut otherwise if we just moved on to the next thing. I know that because I dated a lot of the, a lot of similar women for a long stretch of my life without any real evolution on the type of woman that I wanted to be with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until I had a buddy that I, I broke, I broke up with a girlfriend that I was dating and a buddy said, Hey, like, what are you like? Are you looking for a relationship next? I said, yeah, like, I'm gonna be single for a little while and you know, then I'm probably get another relationship. He said, well, what do you want in that relationship? I'm like, well, I don't know. Just not what was the last one. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the level of clarity of thinking back then. Right? Yeah. And so that was the first opportunity that I had to reflect and like what went well, what didn't go well, what do I want next? What excites me? What doesn't excite me? And so moving into my next relationship, it was so much clearer on what I wanted next. I did that with my second business too. I was like, okay, well, what didn't work? What's really important to me now? Yeah. And so having these really clear endings and having that moment, those moments of reflection to go through provides additional intelligence for, for what's next and an overall richer experience of what was because we talked about like it's, it's about the journey, not just the destination. That journey feels so much richer now that we were able to close this in an integrous way. Yeah, right on. I want to read you a little something, maybe, you know, kind of last place, last stop on this particular episode and maybe we can bring it in for some close reflections. This was something I wrote Back in 2016, I wrote this the day after I finished my 15-year corporate career, right? So I'd spent 5,370 consecutive days at Prudential Financial, and this was day number one after in my new life. And this for me, I feel like is a period of, of time where what I wrote here, I'm proud of because of how I showed up on that 5,370th day. This is what I wrote. When I woke up yesterday, standing at the precipice of my 15-year career with Prudential, a question consumed my mind. How will I show up to complete this chapter of my life on my final day today? You know, in my career, I've seen my fair share of departures, and I've always been fascinated by how people choose to leave the organization and the communities of people that have employed them for years and sometimes even decades of their lives. Some people went out with ceremony. Others just kind of faded off into the night and still others simply just didn't show up one day and didn't tell anybody. But these were 15 of the most transformative years of my life. So I felt the gravity and it was all about to be in the books etched in stone for eternity, its finality. So how will I show up to complete this chapter of my life today? And then my answer came, who gives a shit? I mean, after all, I'd already gone and done all the right things. The organizational announcement had long since gone out and the two-week wind down was in full force. Successfully hand off all projects, check. Create succession plan, check. Celebrate like it's 1999, check. Hey, the boxes were all checked and this was simply the final throwaway day. I'm going to put on a Hawaiian shirt, maybe even a parrot head, waltz into the office, pack up the cardboard boxes and ride off into the sunset. Except... That's not what I wanted to do at all because I gave a shit. This was the final day of 5,370 important days of my life. I'd invested my heart and soul into my work and the people around me during that period. Was I willing to go out like a balloon farting out all its air? Or was I going to race like a sprinter, unleashing my best burst of energy while leaning out maximum force over the finish line? I chose to be the sprinter. So I got out of bed. I shaved, which I dislike and look forward to doing 87.7% less often now. <laughs> and just an interruption here. That's been very true. I probably do it 100% less. I put on my best suit. I nailed the perfect half Windsor after four attempts. And then I went to the office. I called every single person on my team to tell them how proud of them I am, how grateful I am to have served as their leader and what I see in each one of them that makes them special as individuals. I conducted business calls up until 5 p.m. 
devoting my energy as if I was vested in my team's mission for the next 5,370 days. I then spent the next three and a half hours at the office responding to each and every email from a group of people who took the time to open their hearts and encourage me to get after my dream. At 8.30 p.m., I poured a glass of Blanton single barrel bourbon, neat, and sat down to take in the breathtaking view from my 37th floor office in the Viacom building in Times Square for the last time. And at 9 p.m., I called my parents to thank them for teaching me how to treat people. And then I turned out the lights. And just for kicks, I rode home on the subway with a single cardboard box containing my most precious office artifacts because it looked like I just received the cinematic and proverbial unexpected shit canning because I thought it would be funny. And it was. The sympathetic and uncomfortable looks I got from the people on the New York City subway were classic. And when I walked through my door last night, I was flooded with a sense of internal satisfaction that no accolade, recognition, or commission check could ever rival. The best part of finishing strong is how I feel today at the starting line of a new race, one I've never run before. One with many obstacles I have not anticipated and one with no finish line in sight. I stand confident. Finish strong. That's beautiful and moving, brother. What a definition for ending with integrity. And it sounded like it was a lot of fun. Was. Yeah, there's something to be said for being proud about how you're going out. And, and it does require maybe extra energy that you don't think you have, or maybe not necessarily want to give. But I sit here now reading that seven years later and go, fuck yeah, I'm so proud of how I handled that. And I also know of what that did for me on day one, how I woke up. And as I've gone through each of the masterminds and let them know what the future is looking like and how I'm stepping down and handing the torch over, every single group has said that they felt honored and really respect you know, how they've been treated and how I've shown up during that process. And I hope the same thing is happening here with the podcast, you know, for those of, of you who have been on the journey that you're feeling honored and seen and respected for your role in creating this community. And so, you know, maybe in seven years from now, when I look back on like these final six episodes, feeling the same level of satisfaction that I felt reading that letter to you just now. Hey, this is your final invitation to join us for the Bold Move Masterclass, which I'm hosting on Thursday, December the 8th, 90 minutes from 7 to 8.30 p.m. You do not need to attend live. Everyone who purchases will get a copy of the recording. This is your opportunity to lock in on the one thing that if you execute on will fire up every other area of your life. And the Bold Move is a courageous and decisive act in pursuit of the life that you want to live. If you're listening to this episode after Thursday, December the 8th, then there's a link in the show notes to purchase a replay of the recording. If it's before December the 8th, then you can still register. And that link is also at the top of the show notes. Hope to see you there.